Okay. I've been piecing it together. And I've been looking at all the notes left by the Arcanist in the Chronicle of the Underworld, and I think I have it figured out. It's all distilled down into a single song left by Malavestros. Today we'll meet the Alltaker's child who tried to destroy death himself. We're going to dive into the Sanguine Heresy and meet Ravels. This is the School of the Dead. I am your host... I am your host, Andrew Seco. Today our textbook will continue to be the, the Chronicle of the Underworld. Even studying Ravels is dangerous. Corrupting, even. It's dangerous to dig deeper, but I have to. We have to. Ravels... The heretic prophet. Ravels the power slave. Ravels the... Ravels the... Ravels was created by the Alltaker to mirror his own defiant nature. He was the Alltaker's rage and fury. He hated the Celestials, and he hated that the Alltaker would bow before them, even just biding his time for the rebellion. Ravels would bow to no one, not for any reason, and he saw the Alltaker's compliance with the corrupt Celestial realm as weakness, and Ravels grew to hate the Alltaker for his weakness, for working with the Celestials. His rage grew unchecked. The Arcanist says, with no countervailing impulse, this chaotic defiance grew until it consumed Ravels entirely. In episode 7 of School of the Dead, we talked about Oglavale and how he's fighting against a malevolent force in the underworld called the Dreads Grip. This force, it's imbalance. It's your darker nature, winning over your best intent. The Dreads Grip consumed Ravels, though he was none the wiser. No one touched by Dread's Grip really knows that they are. It works into your mind, playing off of your benevolent and genuine intent. It convinces you that what you're doing is right, no matter what. The Dread's Grip consumed Ravels and used it as an agent for its will. Because, as it turns out, the Dread's Grip has a will of its own. So, consumed by his rage, Ravels went to the mortal realm to study. See, this was in the early days of the Underworld, when many of the Alltaker's children were finding new and incredible ways to interact with Etheria. Xyle and Singvath discovered osteomancy. Their discipline led to the philosophy and ultimately the faction of Bone. Gethsemane carved the way for necromancy. Her creativity led to the birth of the philosophy and faction of flesh. Elianastus was, at one point, a being of pure spirit mandering. She was literally pulled from, and thus taught other mourners, the philosophy that formed the faction of spirit. Ravels didn't stick around in the underworld to learn their philosophies. He was independent and, like I said, defiant. He went to the mortal realm to find a new way to interact with Etheria, a new philosophy. Ravels wanted to discover just how to defeat the Celestials. And so he learned how to use Etheria in a, well, I'm not exactly sure what kind of way. The Arcanist doesn't tell us, he doesn't know, and it seems that much about Ravels has been scrapped from history or hidden from us. But he found power in the mortal realm and he found how to wield it, something that all the texts describe with disdain and disgust. Whatever he was doing was wrong, not just unnatural, but cruel. This type of dark use of Etheria, it was his new philosophy. It was what he had hoped would become the fourth faction, the fourth pillar of the underworld, blood. To him, the ends justify the means, so whatever power it took to defeat the Celestials and even challenge death, anything was fair game. Any blood could be spilled. Blood has a twisted way of stealing Etheria, even from living mortals, a life-draining power. And to prove how powerful he was, he threatened the Alltaker himself. He killed the Alltaker's personal guard and protector using the tainted practice of the blood faction 
Ravels corrupted Morgistus and destroyed him. It was a statement. If Ravels was powerful enough to destroy Morgistus, then the Alltaker should be afraid. It proved his power. It threatened death. But it didn't serve his purpose to destroy the Alltaker. Not just yet. First, he wanted the Alltaker to hear him out. With this power, the power he gained from the mortal realm, he could defeat the Celestials. If he could harness all of the Etheria from the living mortals in the mortal realm, the underworld could be free, no longer under the thumb of heaven or hell. But the Alltaker wouldn't risk the mortal realm. After all, the rebellion is in no small part for the mortals. And so he dismissed Ravel's plan, disgusted and disappointed. Ravel's responded the only way he knew how, with rage. He went back to the mortal realm and practiced his blood magic on the mortals, wreaking havoc. He was biding his time, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. It wasn't long until Ravels caught wind of a particularly dangerous practice in the underworld, the creation of the Mortis Knight. You see, the first 100 were all infused with shards of Morgistus. This was no doubt entertaining to Ravels, because as you recall, he destroyed and corrupted Morgistus, which means that every shard of Morgistus had a touch of Dread's grip. Perhaps, he thought, the Mortis Knights could be corrupted too. They would serve him then, not the Alltaker. Ravels would turn the legions of Mortis Knights into his own corrupted Oathbreakers. That is the Sanguine Heresy. Ravels' attempt to corrupt every single Mortis Knight through the Shard of Morgistus. Not only that, he rose armies of Rakers. Rakers are Dreads Grip touched mourners who are just mindless agents for its will. These armies attacked Ilvernus, trying to break through the Vadlam Gates. This was it. Ravels finally took his shot at defeating the Alltaker. The Arcanist says, I gather that the struggle was bitter and brief. The Alltaker defeated Ravels, though there are no records of exactly how. And quite a few mourners rose through the ranks because of their ingenuity and bravery during the Sanguine Heresy. Demethyl, Rafe, and more. Ultimately, the Court of the Dead, no, the Underworld, united and defeated him. Ravels is gone, though like most of the Alltaker's children, each one powerful and influential in their own right, he's not entirely forgotten. No one can quite rid themselves of the stain that Ravels left on the Underworld. There are some that whisper the Alltaker couldn't actually bring himself to destroy his child. And of course, many Underworld scum use his symbol to strike fear into the mourners' hearts. Criminals who claim to be a part of the faction that never was. They leave a mark of a bloodied, twisted handprint. But this... This is just an imitation. They use it for fear, uh, fear to propel their goals. Are these criminals truly devout practitioners of blood? Or are they just imitators using this symbol to strike fear into the hearts of the mourners in the underworld? Or maybe it's a cover up. Maybe what they're doing is creating fear of this symbol while the real danger of blood happens in the secrecy of the shadows, or maybe what's in the shadows are sort of puppet masters for the people using the symbol, but the people are using the symbol are unwittingly using it, unaware that they're actually playing into the larger scheme of blood, and maybe what's... We have to stop. We have to stop because blood is tainted. Nothing good comes of studying it. Nothing good comes from diving deeper and no one really knows the truth. There's rumors and gossip and stories, but no one knows. All that we know is that Ravels was terrifying. And at the same time now, He's told like a scary story to kids or younger mourners. In fact, there's even a nursery rhyme about him. Malavestros wrote it. Let's listen. Leeches and vermin and their self-titled king. 
Spreading their plague to every unliving thing. Ravels the hungry, ravels the wanton, ravels the treacherous, he who is best forgotten. Liches and vermin and the self-titled king, spreading their plague to every unliving thing. Ravels the hungry, ravels the wanton, ravels the treacherous, he who is best forgotten. It is best the ravels is forgotten. Though he was consumed by the dread script, and the dread script does seem to be coming back and as agents again, and ravels may have followers, but it's best to forget everything. Just forget we met, forget this episode, uh, forget it all. You can ask questions about Ravels, but we may not have answers. It's better to forget and, and sing. Yes, sing. Thank you for watching this episode of School of the Dead. Next week, we're going to meet Malavestros, who wrote that song that you heard today. So for now, sing, mortals, and go. Rise, conquer, and rule. The leeches and vermin and the self-titled king Spreading their plague to every unliving thing Ravels the hungry, ravels the wanton Ravels the treacherous, he who is best forgotten Hey, did you like that video? Well, be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more information on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.